Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier here inside the CUBE studios in Palo Alto. We're having a great CUBE conversation around security, malware, phishing, and we're here, Atif Mushtaq, who's the CEO of Slash Next. It's a startup here in the Bay Area uh, with a Series A funding, and they really solved probably one of the hardest problems that people are trying to crack the code on, which is how do you solve the human problem of not getting fished? And that is the technique, how people are getting in. Ashley, hey, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming thanks in. Thanks for having me. So I love bringing the startups in to get the real lay of the land because you're, you got some funding, mm -hmm. you got customers, you just kind of get out in the market, you're at the front lines of security, mm -hmm. and you're solving one of the hardest problems, That's malware, right. phishing. Phishing, yes. So before we get into it, take a minute to explain what the company's doing, what is Slash Next, why did you start the company, what's the early product look like, and, and what's the core problem you, you're targeting? Yeah, uh, of course, I mean, I think uh, you already told that okay, we are a company that is completely focused on phishing and social engineering. We are not a part-time, phishing is not a part-time problem for us. Uh, the company was built on the promise that, okay, the phishing is a growing problem, and we really need a technology and a company who's dedicatedly focused on social engineering and phishing. Uh, before founding Slash Next, I worked for a company called FireEye, and the FireEye was not about phishing. FireEye was all about malware problem, right? So when I came out of that, I started to see that uh, there was a time when the malware were really glowing rapidly, right? And at that time, they were trying to exploit the problems in the software uh, and exploiting that without any human intervention, right? And over the period of time, what we saw that Google, Microsoft, the world, they, had, they tried to make their software really secure. So during my last days at FAR, I, I started to feel that malware growth is going down. And the reason is that the Microsoft software are much better than, than it, they used to be. Google is really determined that okay, nobody should really exploit my software to install malware. But at the same time, I was seeing that okay, the cyber crimes are rising. So if the malware are going down, what is really causing these cyber crimes? And end of the day, I found that, okay, the game has changed. Now it's more about uh, tricking humans and tricking in such a way that they give you their information, they click on the malware themselves without exploiting anything in the software. And I also found that, you know what, I mean, you can't really solve this problem with just conventional computing, right? with the, just the algorithm, you really need to understand the human psychology because these guys are uh, exploiting that psychology. Fear, trust, and reward. All of us are have these emotions, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They just have to exploit them in such a way that we get excited enough to hand over our information willingly to them. And uh, this is where we start. And it's working too, by the way. We know the numbers are off the charts. Um, and we cover it heavily on siliconangle.com and we're about to do a bunch more content on cybersecurity and national security. So now it's not just the individual, the implications are broader. That's right. But let's go back, before we get into that, I want to get back, you said you were at FireEye, the company you worked for, you said they were just doing malware. So they saw malware declining, you saw the trends going up. So when you, when you, when you before you wrote a line of code, mm -hmm. that's what you saw. When you started to put technology, where, what did you do next? I think it started with the problem. I think first of all, I really wanted to make sure that I'm solving a growing problem. If the problem is going down, eventually other people will catch up and by the time you have a solution, maybe the problem is not really there. So it's funny that at that time, there were so many other companies try to solve the malware problem and they didn't realize that, okay, the malware problems are going down. Right, mm -hmm. and because I was working for a company who started the malware thing around 2004 or five, right? So I heard I had already a little seen bit older. The trend yeah. moved on. The fashion moved to phishing. But what did you start writing code on? Was it in the is it born in the cloud? Did you have servers? What were you doing? How were you getting going? Yes, uh, the core technology is based on cognitive computing, and the reason you really need a cognitive computing or artificial intelligence because you need computer software who could understand emotions. Because phishing is about exploiting the human emotion. And they, they try to exploit you by giving you a piece of text or some visuals in order to trick you. Okay, your CEO look like say, okay, transfer me $50,000. There's nothing really malware in it, right? It's just $50,000 transfer to me, right? They give you a fake login page of PayPal 
no malware in that. They're just using the logo. And sometimes they ask you, okay, there are various computer problems on your, on your laptop, right? In order to fix that, you need to call us, right? So they're trying to exploit your emotion of trust, reward, and uh, greed. So end of the day, we thought that, okay, unless, unless we have an army of researchers who are doing all this job because they understand the human emotions, or we can build programs that can understand these emotions, and whenever they see someone is trying to exploit these emotions, they can trigger on that. So result is that we have built a technology in the cloud. So while your user is checking an email or a web page is being rendered on the computer screen, we within millisecond we find okay something suspicious is going on, and we send the information to our cloud. And from our cloud, we launch the browser in real time. So while I'm seeing this web page on my screen, the computer programs are actually seeing a copy of that from the cloud. The only difference is that this, I might not be the tech savvy guy, but the computer algorithm that actually looking into the web page, seeing what logo is being used, and the reading the natural language, they're quite tech savvy. So with it. How about the technology? So you had customers out of the gate. Before you had one uh, dime of venture capital, mm -hmm. you started getting paying customers. How are they deploying? What was the original product? How did, what was their initial traction? Is it a SaaS model? Do they buy software? What's the, what were they paying you for? Uh, the form factor was hardware based. Uh, we, the hardware was cloud powered. The, uh, the, uh, the whole purpose of the hardware was to sniff the network traffic, all the web traffic at the network switch level. And whenever they see something suspicious, they engage the cloud. So the, all the secret sauce and the main technology resided uh, at, that, at the cloud. It was just a mechanical way for us to sniff the traffic. So the first product that we sold was that hardware device. And uh, now we're moving towards more uh, other And did you guys catch some phishing out of the gate? Do you guys solve some problems out of the gate? Yeah, within within second, uh, we started catching stuff. Uh, we first of all started seeing the data exfiltration attempts. We started seeing the phishing attempt right away. And this is where I think they got, we got them by surprise because they already have all these big vendors already in place and they were kind of overconfident. They said, okay, you know what? L you look like a young guy who's really have big claims. You're at FireEye, uh, you must know what you're talking about. We'll give it a shot. We give it a shot. Yeah. And they did never believe that, okay, they thought, okay, maybe I can catch one or two fish in the tanks. Right? I'll try it, I'm I'll buying everything it. on the planet. One more, what's one more box? But we got yeah. them by surprise. At the, at the very, very beginning, the moment you attach the network traffic will start tripping. And this is how we got, I mean, no marketing material, no website, a founder is going without any presentation and just selling. And I had a yeah. VP of sale who would actually carry the box with me. I would manufacture the box in my bedroom. Yeah. My wife would pick, put stickers. She's really good at that. <laughs> and we actually pack it. It looks good, yeah. Super Looks micro good. boxes, well, China chip on there. No, only kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so you got the products. How many customers did you get on, on the early stages? How many did you? Uh, we had around ten paying customer and uh, revenue for around three, four hundred thousand dollar ARR before we went in front of yeah. the VCs. And uh, these guys had actually seen Fire and Fire took a lot of money before they even had yeah. the paying customer. And they say, you know, what are you doing? Right. Yeah, you did a good move there. So uh, bootstrapping is a great. I think not, I think it's not only uh, brave from an entrepreneurial standpoint. It really gives you the more creative freedom because if you're putting your own cash on the table, it shows commitment, and also it gives you a creative license, not like get that extra pressure. Not most VCs might, some VCs might give you a pass. Some most are a bunch of board meetings and want to put pressure on you. That's right. All right, let's before let's take a step back. I want to give us a 101 on the current state of malware. What are the different types of malware out there? You mentioned a few of them just a second ago. Break down um, the top malware. I mean, um, the phishing attacks. What are the top? phishing attacks that you're seeing right now that people should know about, that may not know about? Okay, so there are two things I would call it, um, first of all, there are two things that are happening when it comes to phishing. First of all, the mechanism that phishing attacks were using uh, is moving beyond email. That is the first change. Now we are seeing phishing attacks spreading through advertisement, through social media, through messaging apps. Previously it was just email. So that's one difference that we are seeing. Another difference is that the type of phishing is changing as well. Historical, it has been about fake login pages and, or m money transfer scams. Now we are seeing a lot more things that, that were never being tried by the bad guys. You are seeing the scareware scams where suddenly there's a pop-up on your screen and, 
and they're asking you to okay install a malware because they are problem on your system and so-called antivirus is gonna solve that problem right we are seeing browser extensions being spread through uh, through phishing right we are seeing telephone fraud uh, happening through uh, through um, uh, this phishing right so it has moved beyond just fake login pages so first of all more communication medium and at the same time more type of phishing attacks that are happening so right now if you see around 20 to 30 percent of of the attacks that we are catching are the credential stealing fake login pages around 20 to 30 percent the rogue software fake flash player fake fake uh, PDF readers and all that, and then the rest of the, uh, you know what, browser extensions. So what is spear phishing? I hear that term a lot. Spear phishing ha is the targeted phishing. Spear phishing is that uh, I'm not sending it to hundred and thousand of people randomly, and whoever gets victim to it, that's, that's a bonus, right? The system admin for the Linux kernel for the bank. Yeah, I'm targeting I'm you. I'm targeting him. So I'm going engineer. to LinkedIn, I'm yeah. going to LinkedIn, I want to target your company, so I got your name, I got your email, and I'm sending one email to you. That is spear phishing, right? Uh, the drive-by phishing is all about sending it to thousands and thousands of people uh, and then uh, getting them fish. But there's one thing, there's one trend that is happening that is actually making spear phishing going away. What's really happening is that a lot of people who are targeting you, they don't, don't need to send you the, the direct email. They actually go to the black market and all these guys who are randomly hunting you, they got your name from there. So they don't have to work Dark hard, has my content. right? So I can go there and say, you know what, John, is there anyone with this email who you recently fished and the guy who never really cared about you actually think that I got that guy infected. How much are you going to pay me for that? I paid you $50 and now I got access to your information without even sending you any spear phishing email. So this dark market and this overall cybercrime business actually has made much easier for the guys who really want to target you, spend 50 bucks instead of I try to send you emails and I have to set up all these websites. I don't have to do anything. I can simply go to the dark web yeah. and can buy your information. This is a really good point. I think this is some people, um, it scares a lot of people, but it's well known, the crime syndicates and the dark web are well advanced and well funded. Certainly a lot of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has helped fueling that. Share your opinion on that. How, share some color commentary about how sophisticated and how robust the economy is in the dark web. There are hundreds of millions of dollars. And I mean, you, the guys are making millions of dollars. I mean, uh, I mean, there was a um, uh, there was a ransomware called Crypto Locker, and according to FBI, they made tons of millions of dollars. So the money is huge, and Bitcoin is actually fueling that. Previously, it was very difficult. You can always track back. Previously, around 2006, I remember there was a there was a, a ransomware and they were asking you to transfer money through Western Union, but you can really catch those guys, the money trail always there. Bitcoin is one thing that really fueled the dark web, because for the very first time, you can, you can steal people's money without leaving any trail. And that is actually, I think, is the unfor unfortunate consequences. It is really fueling the cyber crimes, because now you don't have to care about you getting tracked getting arrested. You know, I mean, we have a debate on theCUBE all the time about this. I mean, you know, with, with every dark movement, there's also a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, gaming culture leads a lot of the user experience. The dark web, I think, is leading a lot of the, the transactional things. If you think about shadow IT before cloud was popular, shadow IT is what drove a lot of the cloud early adopter. Some are saying that the dark web and cryptocurrency and blockchain token economics actually is a leading indicator of what we might become, so the dark web might become the operational model. That's right. Because if you just turn the lights on and say, hey, if this is so inefficient, why not just adopt this efficient market? Yeah, you can't track it, but it's more efficient. So again, that's a little bit provocative, again, a little bit radical, but I mean, think about it. A lot of problems going on, Bitcoin certainly is a great way to, to clear that cash out. That's and right. Cannabis sales in the US is driving a lot of Bitcoin as well. That's right. Moving money around. So follow the money, you'll find the technology, is what I always say. Okay, so your thoughts now on the business. How do you see the business shaping? What are you guys trying to do? What's the product currently? You got some venture capital, you got Wing, uh, Wing VC. That's right. And Norwest, Norwest two West great Partners. firms. Um, what's it like? How much did you raise? What are you looking to do? 
So uh, we raised uh, around $9 million last year, and we are getting up for over Series B uh, earlier next year. So we have actually made great progress, and I think the one of the biggest thing that we're getting from our investor is that, I mean, uh, that just like FARI, we got into the business of all this uh, multi-vector fishing uh, at the early stage. So we have an advantage of around two to three years uh, as compared to our uh, competitors, right? So, and at the same time, they also know that we are not developing a niche enterprise product. There are four billion internet users and phishing is all of them problem. So just think about that, right? We just have a tiny customer base, right? But if you target all those internet users, it's going to be around seven billion uh, internet So do you users. have a strategy laid out yet? It's going to be uh, an enterprise business? You're targeting individuals? Have you had a, a clear visibility on some of the, the target beachhead? So next uh, two to three years, it's going to be all enterprise, right? And uh, we'll start with the Northern America and all that. Uh, maybe a later stage, a little bit of the international expansion. Uh, but overall, if you see the roadmap, and we really want to make a great company. I never really started this company to at least sell it for $100 million. You probably made some good dough at FireEye, so took care, they take care of you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I think the purpose was that, I mean, I have nothing else to do, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 and uh, so I'm not a serial entrepreneur, right? So it was never the purpose that I can sell something quickly. Yeah, you I, want to build a durable company. I want to build a durable company, and the, our VCs, they want us to build a durable company yeah. because they want to uh, they want to really want a big exit, right? But I think the roadmap that they're seeing is that, okay, you know what, you can start with enterprise, and then you can go into the consumer space. And again, th I think the problem is huge. It's not a something that you can only sell to enterprise or you can only sell to consumer, right? Every internet user uh, is a victim. Yeah, and I think there's an opportunity for a vendor to come, I mean, a supplier to come out of the market. And I've always said um, to the Lumio guys, Alan Cohen and, and a bunch of other uh, venture back companies, that it's going to be a new company, a new brand that will be the big player because if you look at the market share, no one company actually has dominant market share on cybersecurity. That's right. So you have you know, a thousand flowers blooming, but no clear winner yet. And I, I think that's a function of, you know, they're throwing everything at cybersecurity and the buyers are like, I'll take anything. I'm so desperate. So there's a huge factor of desperation. How do you see that being solved? Because it is a desperate market because you know, people, it's, it's, they can't play offense, they got to play defense, they got to protect. And so that, you know, the perimeter's gone. You know, it used to be the moat and the firewall switch. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's gone, the perimeter. is gone. It's gone, and so now you have surface areas off the charts. So, how do you protect it, <laughs> how do you see? I think, uh, I think we started with the device model, right? But I think now we are moving towards uh, the software and the endpoint business. And we really believe that, uh, uh, you need to cover the remote user. I mean, you just barely spend eight hours in the office, right? So we are actually developing technologies uh, that are going to target the remote users and we're going to target multiple type of devices and all that. So that's our next big thing. Yeah. Offer the same cloud technology. Cloud is the, is you have already developed, right? Now you have to develop multiple form factors or multiple ways to actually access yeah. that cloud. Multi-factor authentication, not just two-factor authentication really is the key, biometrics, things of that nature. Google's got some stuff going on there. But I want to get your, th your thoughts on the cloud. I mean, cloud obviously is part of you, I'm assuming you cloud your secret A big sauce. part of it. Is it on Amazon, Google, which cloud do you use? Uh, it's distributed between AWS, uh, but the core of our logic is actually reside in our own data centers. The reason is that the kind of GPU power that we wanted, because we are rendering all these pages in real time, right? So we never got that kind of GPU support from the off-the-shelf AWS, right? So we really built our own. So a custom GPU powerhouse. Yes. For all the floating point calculations. Yeah, because you have to run millions of browser instances. Can you imagine? We are running all these virtual browser so continuously. So why don't you start a GPU cloud? Uh, it's another venture. Yeah, another <laughs> venture, right? But I think that's the need for yeah. that because yeah. AI and the metrics calculation is going to be the key, right? And they're adding support. Uh, but around 2014, to be really frank, I mean, it, it looked like a joke that okay, you can have hundreds of millions of uh, browser getting up and down, getting up and down in, in real time, right? So we got a very customized cloud uh, for that purpose, and that's actually barrier to entry for a lot of other vendors. Yeah, and I think the cloud provides you some good agility as well. And they have Amazon's kicking butt, we love Amazon. Okay, so now on the future, hiring, 
Um, you got some people. What are the key priorities for you guys? Engineering, obviously, more and more engineering. Uh, Technology is cognitive. What what kind of skill sets are you looking to build? Machine learning, AI. Um, it's already based on the machine learning and AI because we are doing that natural language processing, computer vision analysis. Mm -hmm. Because you want computer to see things what's being rendered mm -hmm. on the screen, right? So we already have that technology. Uh, what we really want to do now is to make it accessible for a variety of customers. Not every customer wants a hardware device. Not every customer wants endpoint solution, right? You need to order multiple form factors. So you want to use this cloud via endpoints. Okay, you take that one. Okay, you love hardware device, right? But at the end of the day, you're offering your cloud service to uh, other people. So first of all, building more form factors mm -hmm. and definitely a more customer traction. Uh, I've got to ask you the question because I also love the entrepreneurial uh, hustle and congratulations on the startup and it's looking really great space to be in by the way. So super, super great. Um, 10 years out from now, in your mind's eye, what's the preferred future look like in your mind for your company and the outcome that 10 years from now? What's it going to look like? What's the state of, uh, fishing and security, if you're successful, if you achieve your mission, what happens? Okay, so I think, I mean, it's kind of funny, over success lies with the bad news, right? I think every threat landscape is changing. It's usually one trend lasts for seven to eight years before it goes down and the bad guys move to the next trend. I think this is the very first time they have started targeting humans viciously, right? The problem is that by the time you have a trained professional, there are new people who are emerging in, right? So what's really, bad? I don't think right this problem is going to get solved anytime sooner. We can't rely on the humans to train, to get trained. They, you can't really make a user a computer security researchers, right? In my opinion, eventually technology has to catch up, in my opinion. Yeah. So I think we have to keep on innovating because they're going to, hackers are going to find new methods and we have to uh, keep up catching up, and I think we'll be a fishing production company in the next 10 years, maybe yeah. adjacent product, but I think we really want to be focused on this. And social engineering, to your point, and, you, and tell me if you agree with this, has been very successful for hackers. Social engineering has been the tactic, and there's a variety of forms of social engineering. That's right. Um, yes. Great, awesome. Well, good luck with everything. Thanks no. for coming on theCUBE. No. We have Atif uh, Mushtaq here, the CEO of Slash Next. Hot startup funded by Norwest Venture Capitalist and Wing VC, uh, two good firms that we know very well. They know their tech. And again, security, great problem to, to solve. And if there's a big thing you want to go after and solve a big problem, it's security. It's theCUBE, bringing you theCUBE coverage here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching.